to pull out my notes real quick. <laughs> notes? A little bit. Well, I told you I was doing research. Oh, is that what you were doing? Yep. <laughs> So when you say research, you mean like a reading Instagram comment? <laughs> no, I mean doing research on you. Oh, on me? <laughs> I was watching your vid video, Xana, or should I call you blonde girly one, two, three? Ew! How did you what? <laughs> did I mention that in a video? It took like four seconds of Googling to find that. Oh, well, I'm sorry, do you prefer to go by it's Xana? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> to be fair. I made new channels because those were easy to find. There's no videos on them though, right? Correct, there's no videos. But I did find some pictures. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> so on one we have a picture of you. You look a bit like a Scandinavian tween starring in an indie horror flick. Oh my god. I was looking at it. <laughs> I've seen the photo. Yeah. Is it? This picture <laughs> I can't believe you were researching me the whole time and I was just sitting there blissfully unaware. Oh, you oh. didn't know what I was laughing at, but now you do know. <laughs> Alright, so... <laughs> Is that just the intro? You're not going anywhere with that? You just felt like <laughs> including it. Ah! <laughs> Okay, so if you don't know, Xana is a <laughs> great introduction, thanks. Welcome, YouTuber and aspiring filmmaker. Mm -hmm. I found Xana's year videos like three years ago, maybe? Immediately when I saw your videos, I was like, wow, she has such an incredible like eye and talent for understanding the structure and the storytelling of what a vlog should be. But you're um, not but. And <laughs> and you have such a strength for editing and for storytelling. You have these monthly scrapbooks that you do, mm -hmm. which is um, a compilation of all the footage that you've taken. You've probably seen things like them. It is very hard to convince me to watch anything that's longer than five minutes. <laughs> so yeah, I'd never seen them before. And the note I have is, dude, these monthly scrapbooks, what the actual fuck? Uh, these beautiful vignettes of your life, they're so intimate and beautiful. I mean this sincerely, you're truly a gifted editor. You're um, telling the story of your life so, so beautifully. I'm, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's so wonderful to see these snapshots of um, these moments with friends compounded with your thoughts on your experience of your life right now. The first one I watched was one where you have this footage of you as a child and your grandma is like, Hey, Santa, how are you? Are you happy? <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I thought I was gonna cry when I was watching it. I just, you're amazing at what you do oh. and... Um... <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> Yeah, so I have a question for you. Okay. How much of that talent that you have for editing and for story editing do you feel is a natural talent and how much of that was practice and influence? Hmm. It's probably all practice and influence because nobody just like pops out the womb being an excellent editor. <laughs> like I've spent most of my teen years watching YouTube and watching like similar things to the things I make now. So I think everybody's work is just like a combination of every other piece of work they've ever seen. So can so. I press you a little bit on that? Sure. A lot of questions I get are from people who are interested in a career in the arts, um, especially even like just with a simple task like guitar. People are like, I always wanted to learn how to play guitar and you learn so quickly, you're so like gifted at it. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel like I'm gifted at guitar. I think I just put a lot of hours in. Mm -hmm. But some things I do think I have a natural inclination toward. Mm -hmm. Like I think I was inclined toward the idea of editing. I guess my question is, are you dismissing some sense of a natural storytelling ability? I don't know. I feel like it's not for me to say. Like, I don't think it's for anyone to say, I have this as a, an innate talent. I can say for a fact that I am naturally good at this thing. I just don't think that that's something you can ever say of yourself. Why? It's also subjective and like deciding for yourself. I don't know. I mean, do what you want. <laughs> but I, I don't feel comfortable saying that I have a natural talent for something. But if I've like objectively put in the work to get good at something, then that, that's like, I don't know. I just don't feel like I can say I am good at this thing just because I am. <clears throat> Back to my notes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I asked on Instagram, if anyone had any subjects they'd like us to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, monochrome monarchy. 
I like how well I said that. <laughs> Maybe being in the public eye when you're quite young and how it affects your daily lives. And I had a specific question for you. Oh. I'm not sure if you've noticed this, but you are very blonde. And I had a question along those lines of, have you given much thought to how um, standing out as much as you do has shaped or affected your childhood or experience online? My parents, were the type of parents that raised me to be like, you're so smart and talented and good at everything. Look at you, amazing, special. And I think looking different from everyone else added to that a lot. I was sort of like, yes, I'm exempt. And like growing up, realizing how not true that is mm. was like a bit rough, but it's kind of like a pressure off as well. Um, to realize that because I think I was like oh but what if I don't achieve great success it'll be all my fault but uh, now it's sort of like lots of people don't achieve great success I'll just be one of those and that's completely fine there's no special reason for me to have to succeed yeah maybe you are still um loved and have worth even if you are not some huge success in some career capacity mm. yeah. maybe question mark <laughs> it's yeah. fine to not be unique most people are not unique because you unique is used wrong as well unique mm. means one of its kind like just one and there's nobody is just one of their kind hmm, i Ex disagree with that really yeah <laughs> no one else is xana you are the only you. Yeah, you are but, literally unique. But like, there's no way that I have traits that nobody else in the world has. But, okay, here's, here's how I view the world. You're just a person, like everybody else. And in that way, you are not unique. You are part of this, like, combined experience. There's nothing special about you. And at the exact same time, you are the only you that has ever and will ever exist. And your unique experience with life thus far is a story that only you have and that you can tap into to provide like a unique experience to the people you interact with. Okay. I would need more time to formulate my argument to respond to that publicly. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is, this is my last one. It's Mark over there said, have you asked your friends on their perception of yourself yet? So I don't know if you know this about me, but a few years ago, a friend of mine here in Nashville, Stephanie Skipper, check her out on Instagram, asked uh, some of her close friends, including myself, what uh, their perception of her was. And I was like, I could never do that. I would never do that. But recently I have felt more like, actually, you know what? I am comfortable with the fact that I have faults and I am curious to know what they are because they might in fact be things that I'm not aware of about myself. Mm -hmm. It might be helpful to me to hear them from someone who I know and trust loves me and realize that they can see those faults about me mm -hmm. and still love me. How do you feel about all that? Yeah, I feel kind of the same. I feel like we said this in, in a video once. Mm. Yeah. Um, I have since that video asked a couple of people <gasps> how they perceive me. Ooh! I actually, with one person, was like, is there anything that you don't like about me? Because like we were friends and it was fun. I like that you go right for the negative. Because we were having just like a discussion about like our friendship and stuff and like how things were going. And I was like, is there anything that you wish that I did differently? Do I ever like hurt your feelings? Like, is there something I could be doing differently? Um, Damn girl. And look at that maturity. Look at it. How did it go? He, yeah, it went pretty well. He said that um, I often go straight into talking about the negative parts of an experience I've had and it makes him worry that I do that with experiences I've had with him. Like I'm saying to other people, yeah, we went and did this oh. thing and I didn't like it because of this. So I've been working on that and I'm trying to be more positive about stuff. I do think my negativity is my ugliest trait. Girl, you inspire me. Aww. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> do it. Do, do one, do one. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Good for you. Do you think you're a pessimist? Um, I think I'm very used to things being in like a state of crisis and like my identity was tied in with like, I'm a victim and I've had a hard time my whole life. So I think I'm um, prone to look at the negative sides of things. But mm. like in the grand scheme of things, I haven't had that hard of a time. And if I keep telling myself that my life is hard, then it's going to keep being hard. Mm. And I want to give myself a chance to have a nice time. I'm a pessimist, but I'm not proud of You're it. You're working on it. I'm working on it. Same. I'm a pessimist too. I didn't even realize I, pe I was a pessimist until this year. Ooh. I was like, no, I'm just a realist. <laughs> oh yeah, me. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, then someone pointed out that it, like, do you think you might be a pessimist? And I was like, oh no, no way. But I kept like 
tossing that around in the old brain chamber. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, actually that's completely true about me. Because the, the lie that I believe is that if I can have an expectation that nothing will ever work out, then I'll never be disappointed and I'll always be pleasantly surprised. Mm. But it's not true at all. Mm. I still feel disappointment, mm -hmm. even if I set myself up for it. And um, I don't allow myself to feel like hope fulfilled mm -hmm. if I'm never hopeful. Mm -hmm. It's always just like, oh, cool. Instead of being like, wow, I really wanted this and it worked out. Yes, agree with all of that. Would you like to know how I perceive you? Yeah. Go you, ahead. Positives and negatives. You go for it. Okay. I think that you are an incredibly thoughtful human being. Every time we cross paths, I observe you working through trying to find a better understanding of who you are and your motivations. You place a great value of understanding other people's motivations, extending compassion and understanding to both your friends and to people who've hurt you. And that means I observe you as being quick to dismiss your own feelings about something as being unjustified. Instead, placing a greater importance on a seemingly objective view of what people meant. I think you're very hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. I think you wish you had a complete understanding of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would more often extend the same compassion I see you extending to others, to yourself. Knowing it's okay to be incomplete, um, still working through things at every stage of life. I'm proud of who you are and I'm grateful to get to be your friend. In the time I've known you, I've really seen you moving from a very dualistic view of I'm either good or bad mm -hmm. into being comfortable with being incomplete. And I think that's really beautiful and I'm really proud of you. Aww. Oh, Tessa. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you too. I feel that I don't have like a speech prepared. <laughs> no, that's okay. I, I tricked you with this. Um, many, many levels. So oh. wonderful. <laughs> respond to that in any way i guess i can let you um, have two cents on that <laughs> i guess i kind of yeah I, I agree with with most of that i'm deliberately very hard on myself because i think i have a fear that if i stop being hard on myself for a second i'll slip and become a bad person so <laughs> <laughs> i mean you know people are flawed i try but yeah. anyway yeah <laughs> subscribe to not just blonde. <laughs> subscribe to not just blonde. <laughs> yes do and check out her uh monthly videos don't be like me who hates to watch anything <laughs> more than five minutes they're so touching is there anything else i need to say uh don't forget to smash that like button don't forget to smash <laughs> i have a record coming out i have a single coming out june 15th it's called mm -hmm. crush mm -hmm. and then a record coming out after that at some point so Get hype, people. Share my videos so that more people will come to my shows. <laughs> anyway, cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. Thanks for watching! This episode of Pillow Talk is brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community for learning about things such as music, filmmaking, photography, and more. So I've been traveling a lot lately and I really want to be taking better pictures, but not something I know a lot about. So a good course for me might be this crash course on iPhone photography, where I can learn how to take stunning photos, optimize my iPhone camera settings, lots of things which I currently know almost nothing about. Alternatively, I might take this course in basic guitar to help me brush up on my basics and learn some new things I know nothing about, like guitar solos? One premium membership gives you access to thousands of courses for $10 a month for an annual subscription. Plus, the first 500 people to sign up using the link in the description get your first two months for free. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this Pillow Talk, and I will see you soon.